It was the week before Halloween. Elliot wanted to play with his brother Michael, but Michael said no. Come on, guys, Elliot pleaded. I can fight goblins too. Just go get the pizza, Michael said. Elliot went outside and paid the delivery man. On the way back inside, he heard a noise coming from the shed. Elliot lived near a forest. Sometimes coyotes wandered into the shed, but these footprints didn't look like coyote tracks. And coyotes don't roll balls to kids. It definitely wasn't a coyote. Elliot tried to tell his family, there's a goblin in the shed, a real goblin. Where's the pizza? Michael asked. No one believed Elliot's story. The next day, Elliot went beyond the shed and into the woods to look for the goblin. He saw people with strange equipment searching for something. Were they looking for the goblin too? If they found it, what would they do to it? Elliot had to find the goblin first. That night, after everyone was asleep, Elliot left a trail of candy from the shed into the house, up the stairs, and into his room. It turned out the goblin liked candy. The next day, Elliot introduced the goblin to Michael and to his little sister, Gertie. Michael and Gertie quickly realized what Elliot had learned the night before. The goblin was kind and very smart. The kids were excited and curious about their new friend. He seemed too nice to be a goblin. Maybe he's a monkey, said Michael. I don't like his feet, said Gertie. We are here, home, Elliot said. Where are you from? The goblin pointed up at the sky. Then he used his powers and some fruits and vegetables to create a model of his solar system. The goblin wasn't a goblin at all. He was an extraterrestrial, an alien from another planet. Elliot called him E.T. for short. Meanwhile, the people looking for E.T. were getting closer. The next morning, the kids went off to school. Their mom was leaving for work and she heard a noise coming from the closet. But when she opened the door, all she saw were stuffed animals. After she left, E.T. had the house all to himself. He went exploring. First, he made friends with the local wildlife. Then he got something to eat. He found a toy to play with and something to read. He watched the television and learned about Earth forms of communication, all of which gave him an idea. If only he could find everything he needed. When Gertie came home, she taught E.T. the alphabet. B is for balloon, she said. B. E.T. said. Yes, Gertie said. B, good. Elliot got home not much later and found E.T. in his closet. Gertie and E.T. were playing dress up together. Elliot, E.T. said. I taught him to talk, Gertie bragged. Elliot found the box of items that E.T. had collected. He cut himself on a saw blade. Ouch, Elliot yelped. Ouch, E.T. said. His finger began to glow. E.T. touched his fingertip to Elliot's, and the cut healed. Then E.T. showed Elliot and Gertie a drawing of something he wanted to build. It looked like a radio. Phone home, E.T. said. E.T. worked on his radio all night. Meanwhile, the people who were looking for E.T. were getting even closer. E.T. wanted his family to find him and take him home, but he had to hurry. E.T. wasn't meant to live on Earth. He was starting to feel sick. The next day was Halloween. It was the perfect time to get E.T. into the woods where he could use the radio to send a clear signal home. Michael and Elliot pretended that E.T. was dirty. Off they went into the streets in broad daylight. No one suspected a thing. Some of the costumes made E.T. think of home. Away from the other trick-or-treaters, Elliot E.T. got on Elliot's bike and headed into the woods. When the ride got too bumpy, E.T. took over. Together, they rose off the ground and soared through the sky. They landed in a clearing and assembled the radio. E.T. pointed it toward the sky and they sat down to wait. Elliot woke up cold the next morning. He and E.T. had been in the woods all night. By the time they got home, the people who were searching for E.T. were at Elliot's house. They were scientists, and they wanted to learn about E.T. They put him in a box to bring him to their lab. As Elliot was saying goodbye, E.T.'s chest started to glow. E.T. phone home, E.T. said. Does this mean they're coming? asked Elliot. Yes, said E.T. Elliot knew this was his last chance to help E.T. While the scientists were busy packing up their equipment, 
Elliot and Michael snuck E.T. out of the house. Michael's friends brought their bikes and they all raced into the woods. The scientists chased them. To escape, E.T. used his powers again and all the boys soared up into the sky. When they reached the forest, a giant spaceship was landing. Elliot was sad that his friend had to go. E.T. was sad too. The tip of E.T.'s finger lit up and he touched Elliot's forehead. I'll be right here, said E.T. Elliot knew he would always remember their extraordinary friendship.